Good evening, intrepid souls, and welcome to Haunting Crypt Chronicles. Tonight, as the old year wanes and the new one beckons, we uncover the bone-chilling enigmas cloaked in the shroud of New Year's Eve. As the hands of the clock conjoin at midnight, signaling the genesis of another year, the sinister undercurrent ripples through the air. We're not just talking about jubilations and sparkling fireworks. We're delving into the spine-tingling, supernatural occurrences that are said to manifest at this liminal hour. In the misty streets of London, an eerie silence pervades before a sudden clatter shatters the stillness. Legend speaks of a ghostly coach drawn by headless horses, its reins held by a decapitated driver. Those who've witnessed it whisper of misfortune and dread trailing in its wake. Just as you ponder this tale, a sudden ghastly sound of hooves echoes as if right beside you. In the heart of London, as the old year gasps its final breaths, a chilling legend whispers through the cobblestone streets. A tale as old as time yet fresh with each telling. I find myself wandering these ancient paths, the mist hanging like a shroud over the city. The air ripe with anticipation and an unspoken dread. The legend speaks of a phantom coach, a spectral carriage drawn by headless horses, its reins held by a driver decapitated, a figure from a bygone era, forever trapped in an endless loop of torment and despair. As the storyteller, I tread softly, my steps echoing against the stone, my breath forming ghostly tendrils in the cold night air. There's a certain electricity tonight, a palpable sense of something there worldly, as if the very fabric of reality is thinner, more fragile. Big Ben towers above, its clock face a glowing beacon in the murky darkness. The chimes are yet to sound midnight, but their impending toll feels like a countdown to something inexplicable, something that defies the laws of nature and man. The tale of the Phantom Coach is not just a story to me. It's a journey into the unknown, a test of my own beliefs and fears. As I speak into the camera, narrating the lore for my unseen audience, a shiver runs down my spine. It's not just the cold, it's the sensation of being watched, of unseen eyes fixed upon me from the shadows. The legend has it that on New Year's Eve, just as one year yields to the next, the phantom coach rides again, its appearance an omen of misfortune, a harbinger of doom. Some dismiss it as mere folklore, but here, amidst the ancient stones and fog, the legend feels all too real. A distant sound catches my attention, a faint clatter that grows steadily louder. It's too rhythmic to be random, too deliberate to be dismissed. My heart starts to race. My breath quickens. Could it be? The sound of hooves on stone, a sound that shouldn't exist in modern London, yet here it is, drawing nearer with each passing second. I pause, my words faltering, the camera lens my only witness. The legend of the Phantom Coach is no longer just a story. It's unfolding around me, enveloping me in its eerie embrace. And as I stand there, on the brink of midnight, I can't help but wonder, am I merely a storyteller or have I become a part of the legend itself? In the thickening mist, the distant echo of the hooves becomes a relentless drumming in my ears. The legends of old London had always fascinated me, but standing here in the flesh, the line between myth and reality begins to blur. Tales of the phantom coach were often told in hushed tones in dimly lit pubs and around crackling fires, tales that spoke of a cursed coach that roamed the streets of London every New Year's Eve, seeking something unknown, something sinister. As a storyteller, I've always been a bridge between the spectral world of legends and the tangible reality of my viewers. Yet now, as the sound of the ghostly hooves grows closer, a visceral fear takes hold of me. It's a sound that seems to come from another time, a distant past trying to break through into the present. My heart races, each beat in sync with the approaching hooves. The air grows colder, the mist thicker, as if nature itself is reacting to the presence of the supernatural. Turning my camera to capture the deserted street behind me, I continue narrating, my voice barely concealing the tremor within. Legend has it, I begin, that the phantom coach is an omen, a prelude to tragedy. It's said that during the 18th century, a nobleman met his untimely demise on these very streets, beheaded in a gruesome accident. His spirit, unable to find peace, 
roams the streets every New Year's Eve in his phantom coach, driven by his own headless form. The chilling sound of the hooves is now accompanied by the creaking of wheels, a ghostly carriage emerging from the fog. My breath catches in my throat. The coach is more than just a spectral vision. It's a relic of a bygone era, its ethereal form shimmering in the mist. The horses, spectral and headless, send a wave of terror through my body. And there, on the driver's seat, a headless figure, dressed in the garb of centuries past. Reins in hand, and its headless posture is an eerie testament to the legend. In a moment of horrifying clarity, the coach turns towards me, its path seemingly altered by my presence. My instincts scream to flee, but I'm rooted to the spot, the camera, my only shield. As the coach draws nearer, I can hear the soft whispers of the past. Voices of those who had encountered the coach and lived to tell the tale, and those who hadn't been as fortunate. Whispers of a curse, a vengeful spirit seeking redemption fill my mind. They speak of a nobleman wronged, a life cut short, and a restless spirit bound to the earth. The tales vary, but one element remains constant. The appearance of the coach always precedes misfortune. Families torn apart by sudden tragedies, lovers separated by inexplicable circumstances, and individuals vanishing into the night, never to be seen again. I continue to film, my hands trembling as the coach stops before me. The headless driver turns as if looking at me with unseen eyes. A cold wind whips around me, the mist swirling in unnatural patterns. Time seems to stand still, the world holding its breath. And then in a moment that chills me to the core, the headless driver extends a hand towards me. A silent invitation, a beckoning into the unknown. The legends had never spoken of this never hinted that the coach sought something or someone. The realization hits me. The coach isn't just a harbinger of doom. It's a collector of souls, searching for something lost, something it needs to find peace. In a panic, I back away, my heart pounding against my ribs. The coach lingers for a moment longer, before turning and disappearing into the fog as suddenly as it had appeared. The sound of the hooves fades, leaving behind a deafening silence. I stand there, alone in the street, the camera still recording. The encounter with the phantom coach, a legend I had only ever spoken of, now a terrifying reality. I ponder over the meaning of the driver's gesture. Was it a warning, a call for help, or something more ominous? As I gather my thoughts, the distant chimes of Big Ben strike midnight. The new year has begun, but for me, time has lost its meaning. The encounter with the Phantom Coach has opened a door to a world I had always believed was just a figment of folklore. I realized then that my role as a storyteller has irrevocably changed. No longer am I merely a narrator of tales. I've become a part of the legend itself, a living piece of the tapestry of London's haunted history. The camera still in my hand has captured something unimaginable, something that defies explanation. I know that the footage I hold is more than just a record of a supernatural encounter. It's a testament to the thin veil that separates our world from the one beyond, a reminder that some legends are rooted in truths too terrifying to comprehend. As I make my way home, the weight of the experience bearing down on me, I can't shake the feeling that my life has been altered forever. The Phantom Coach, a specter of London's dark past, has marked me. I can't help but wonder what the new year holds for me now that I've looked into the eyes of a headless driver and lived to tell its tale. As the spectral coach fades into the fog, leaving behind a haunting silence, I stand frozen, my mind racing with a mix of fear and fascination. The air around me feels charged, as if I've touched something ancient and forbidden. The reality of what I've just witnessed is overwhelming. And yet there's a part of me that yearns to understand to delve deeper into the abyss that has just opened before me. Turning off the camera, I wrap my coat tighter around me. The cold suddenly more biting, more real. My thoughts are a whirlwind of confusion and curiosity. The encounter with the phantom coach was more than an eerie sighting. It was a brush with a world beyond our understanding, a world that defies the laws of life and death. As I walk back through the now silent streets of London, the chimes of Big Ben fading into the distance, I can't help but feel that I am not alone. There's a sensation of being followed, 
of eyes watching me from the shadows. Every whisper of wind, every creak of an old building sets my nerves on edge. The city around me feels different, as if I am seeing it through a new lens, one tinted with the knowledge of the supernatural. R reaching my home, I find no solace in its familiar walls. The footage from the camera, now safely stored away, feels like a ticking time bomb, a record of an event that should not have been possible. The urge to review the footage is overwhelming, but there's a part of me that fears what it might reveal. Finally, I give in to the compulsion. As the video plays, I watch in a mix of horror and awe as the phantom coach appears from the mist. Its ghostly horses and headless driver captured in eerie detail. But it's the moment the coach stops before me that sends a chill down my spine. The driver's outstretched hand is it an invitation or a warning I cannot tell. And then as I watch, the footage reveals something I had not seen at the moment. Behind the coach, barely visible in the fog, is a figure. A figure that watches me with an intensity that is almost palpable through the screen. I pause the video, zooming in on this unexpected apparition. My blood runs cold as I recognize the face. It's my own, or rather, a spectral version of me. My eyes hollow, my expression one of sorrow and despair. The realization hits me like a physical blow. The phantom coach was not just a harbinger of doom. It was a mirror to the soul, a reflection of the inner darkness that resides in us all. The headless driver, the restless nobleman, was not just seeking redemption for himself. He was a guide, leading those who witnessed him to confront their own shadows, their own hidden fears and regrets. The figure of me behind the coach, a ghostly echo of my being, represents the part of me that is lost, that yearns for understanding and peace. The coach's appearance was not a random occurrence. It was a call, a beckoning to embark on a journey of self-discovery, a journey into the heart of the unknown. As the video ends, I sit in stunned silence, my mind reeling from the implications of what I've just seen. The legend of the phantom coach is more than a tale of ghosts and curses. It's a story of redemption, of facing one's demons and emerging stronger. I know now that my encounter with the Phantom Coach was not the end of the story, but the beginning. A beginning that leads me down a path of exploration, of confronting the darkness within and finding the light that lies beyond. The Coach, a spectral entity bound by tragedy, has shown me that even in the depths of despair, there is hope. There is a chance for redemption. And as I turn off the camera, a sense of determination fills me. I will share this story with the world, not just as a tale of horror and mystery, but as a lesson in courage and the power of facing one's fears. The Phantom Coach of London, a legend steeped in darkness, has become a beacon of light, guiding me and perhaps others to a greater understanding of the mysteries that lie just beyond the veil of our reality. Our journey takes us next to Japan, where the reverberation of temple bells piercing the cold night air signifies purification from 108 worldly desires. But a darker legend lurks. On the 108th toll, a thin veil parts, allowing spirits to traverse between worlds. Imagine standing there as the bell tolls for the 108th time, your heart pounding, eyes scanning the shadows. Under the moonlit sky of a crisp New Year's Eve, I find myself in the serene embrace of a Japanese temple. The air is crisp, infused with the scent of incense and ancient wood. Here, a tradition steeped in mystery and spirituality beckons the new year. The striking of the temple bell exactly 108 times, a sacred ritual intended to cleanse the soul from the 108 earthly desires. As I set up my camera, capturing the temple's majestic silhouette against the night sky, a sense of solemn anticipation washes over me. I'm about to witness a ritual that is more than just a cultural spectacle. It's a gateway to the unknown, a bridge between the physical and the spiritual realms. My viewers, I know, are waiting with batted breath, their curiosity piqued by the promise of a journey into the heart of a Japanese New Year's Eve tradition. The temple grounds are tranquil, the air filled with a respectful silence, punctuated only by the distant chatter of visitors and the rustling of leaves in the gentle breeze. Lanterns hang from the eaves, casting a warm, inviting glow. 
The atmosphere is one of reverence and introspection, a stark contrast to the raucous celebrations elsewhere in the world. As the hour approaches, the monks prepare for the ritual. Their movements are deliberate and measured, imbued with a sense of purpose and age-old wisdom. I find myself drawn into the solemnity of the moment, my heart sinking with the rhythm of the preparations. The bell, a colossal structure of bronze, hangs imposingly, its surface etched with intricate designs that speak of history and tradition. It's a symbol of both the end and the beginning, a sonic harbinger of the transition from the old year to the new. The legend, as whispered among the locals and recounted in hushed tones, is that at the 108th strike, the veil between our world and the spirit world thins, allowing a brief moment of communion with the unseen. I share this legend with my audience, my voice a whisper in the quiet of the night. Some say that spirits, both benign and malevolent, traverse this threshold, drawn to the resonance of the bell, I narrate, the camera capturing the play of light and shadow on my face. Tonight we will witness this enchanting ritual, and perhaps, if the legends hold true, experience something beyond our understanding. The first strike of the bell resonates through the air, deep and sonorous, vibrating in my chest. It's a sound that feels ancient, primal, and as the strikes continue, each one methodically counting down the earthly desires, a sense of otherworldliness grows. The air seems to shimmer, the edges of reality blurring ever so slightly. As I continue to film, the anticipation builds. Each toll of the bell feels like a step deeper into a realm of mystery and wonder, a journey into the heart of a night where anything seems possible, where the boundaries of our world may just open to reveal the secrets of the one that lies beyond. The bell tolls continue, each resonating deeper into the night, reverberating through the temple grounds and into the depths of my soul. There's a rhythm to it, hypnotic and entrancing, lulling the mind into a state of heightened awareness. The air around me feels charged, almost electric, as if the very essence of the night is transforming with each chime. With the camera rolling, I narrate for my viewers. Each toll of the bell symbolizes the shedding of one earthly desire, a ritual purification to welcome the new year with a spirit unburdened by the weights of the past. My words are barely above a whisper, a respectful nod to the sanctity of the ritual unfolding before us. The crowd is sparse, a few souls drawn to the temple for reasons of their own. There's a couple holding hands tightly as if seeking comfort in each other's presence. An old man stands alone, his eyes closed, face serene yet etched with lines of many years. Each person here is a story, a life touched by the magic of this ancient tradition. As the bell tolls continue, I find myself recounting tales and legends associated with this mystical night. There are stories, I say into the camera, of spirits that wander these grounds on New Year's Eve. Some are benign remnants of ancestors coming to bless their descendants. Others are restless souls seeking closure or bearing messages from beyond. The atmosphere becomes increasingly surreal. The shadows cast by the lantern seem to dance creating fleeting, ethereal figures that vanish when looked at directly. A chill runs down my spine, not from the cold, but from the growing sense of something otherworldly in the air. At the fiftieth toll, I pause my narration. A subtle change has come over the temple grounds. It's as if the air itself is thinner, the barrier between worlds more permeable. I can almost feel the presence of the unseen. A silent audience to the ritual. The camera captures a sudden movement in the corner of the frame, a fleeting shadow that doesn't align with the movements of the present crowd. My heart skips a beat. Is it a trick of the light or something more? I pan the camera slowly, but the shadow is gone, leaving only the lingering doubt of what it might have been. As the bell nears the hundredth toll, a sense of anticipation grips me. The legends speak of the hundred eighth strike as the moment of transition the brief window when spirits cross over. I can't help but wonder what or who might appear when the bell tolls for the final time. The air grows colder, the night quieter, as if the world is holding its breath. The old man suddenly opens his eyes, his gaze meeting mine across the distance. There's a knowing in his eyes, a silent understanding of the night's true nature. The 107th toll sounds echoing into the night and the world seems to pause. I hold my breath, 
The camera's steady in my hands. The anticipation is palpable, a thick tension that hangs in the air. And then silence. The 108th toll doesn't come. The sudden absence of sound is jarring, an unfinished symphony that leaves a sense of unease. The crowd stirs, a murmur of confusion rippling through the air. I look around, the camera still rolling, capturing the collective sense of expectancy turned to uncertainty. The old man's gaze is still fixed on me, a cryptic expression on his face. And then, in a moment that makes my heart stop, a figure emerges from the shadows near the bell. The figure is shrouded in darkness, indistinct yet unmistakably human. Slowly, it moves towards me, its footsteps silent. The crowd seems oblivious to its presence, as if it exists only for me. As it draws closer, a sense of dread washes over me. There is something familiar about this figure, something that resonates deep within me. The air around it seems to shimmer, the boundary between the physical and the spiritual blurring before my eyes. The figure stops just outside the camera's frame, its face still hidden in shadow. I feel compelled to speak, to ask who or what it is, but my voice falters. The atmosphere is charged with a silent intensity, a communication beyond words. Then in a voice that's barely a whisper yet clear as a bell, the figure speaks. You seek to understand the mysteries of this night, it says, but some truths are beyond the living. The voice is familiar, echoing a memory I can't quite grasp. A mix of fear and intrigue compels me to raise the camera, to capture this apparition on film. But as I do, the figure steps back, dissolving into the shadows as if it was never there. The bell tolls once more, the 108th chime sounding late, its resonance marking the end of the ritual. The crowd begins to disperse, the spell of the evening broken. I stand there, the camera still in my hand, my mind reeling from the encounter. Who was that figure? A spirit from the other side or a manifestation of my own subconscious? The footage once reviewed might hold answers, but a part of me fears what it might reveal. As I leave the temple grounds, the old man's words echo in my mind. A warning or perhaps a guidepost to a journey that has just begun. Tonight's experience has opened a door to a world I had only ever explored in stories. A world where the living and the dead converge in a dance as old as time itself. As the final delayed toll of the bell fades into the night, a profound silence envelops the temple. The air feels heavier, as if laden with the weight of unseen presences. My heart beats erratically, a stark contrast to the calm that had preceded the 108th chime. The strange encounter with the shadowy figure lingers in my mind, a puzzle that refuses to be solved. Turning off the camera, I stand motionless, the sense of being watched intensifying. The temple, once a place of serene beauty, now feels like a stage where the veil between worlds has grown perilously thin. The whispers of the past mingle with the rustling leaves, creating a symphony of the uncanny. As I gather my thoughts ready to leave, a sudden chill runs down my spine. The sensation is not just physical. It feels as though something has brushed against the very essence of my being. I turn swiftly, the camera forgotten in my hand. There, in the shadows of the temple, stands the figure once more. This time, its features are more discernible, bathed in the soft glow of the lanterns. My breath catches in my throat as recognition dawns. The figure bears an uncanny resemblance to me, but with an ethereal quality, as if it's a reflection from another realm. The figure steps forward, its movements graceful yet somber. You seek answers. It speaks its voice a haunting echo of my own. But some truths are buried deep, entwined with the roots of your soul. The words resonate within me, stirring memories, long suppressed fears, long hidden. I muster the courage to speak, my voice barely above a whisper. Who are you? The figure, a mirror image of myself yet not, regards me with a poignant intensity. I am what you will become, it replies a traveler between worlds, a seeker of the unexplained. A cold realization washes over me. 
The figure is not just a spirit. It's a manifestation of my future self, a harbinger of a path yet to be taken. The stories I've narrated, the legends I've delved into are not just tales. They are waypoints on a journey that will lead me deeper into the realms of the unknown. The figure raises its hand pointing toward the bell. As I follow its gesture, the air around the bell shimmers, revealing fleeting images. Scenes of my past and glimpses of my future intertwine, a tapestry of moments that have shaped and will shape my destiny. In these images, I see myself not just as a storyteller, but as a bridge between the living and the spectral, a role that carries both a gift and a burden. The figure's message is clear. The journey I'm on is not just about uncovering mysteries, it's about discovering the depths of my own spirit. As the vision fades, the figure steps back, merging once more with the shadows. A sense of peace settles over me, a stark contrast to the turmoil of the night. The 108th toll of the bell was not just a conclusion to a ritual. It was the beginning of a deeper understanding, a revelation of my place in the tapestry of the universe. I leave the temple grounds with a newfound sense of purpose, the encounter with my spectral self has opened my eyes to a larger reality, one where stories are not just tales to be told, but keys to unlocking the mysteries of the soul. As I make my way back through the quiet streets, the first light of dawn breaks over the horizon. The world around me feels different, as if I'm seeing it with new eyes. The journey ahead is uncertain, filled with challenges and wonders yet to be discovered. But one thing is clear. The Bell of Spirits has not just cleansed me of earthly desires. It has awakened a thirst for knowledge, for understanding the unseen forces that weave through our lives. And as the new year dawns, I step into it not just as a storyteller, but as a seeker of truth, ready to embrace whatever mysteries the future holds. As dawn breaks on New Year's Day in Brazil, an ethereal figure known as the White Lady is rumored to appear. While her visage promises fortune, a harrowing twist lurks. Those who lock eyes with her are said to be ensnared in a year of unspeakable trials. But what if the White Lady wasn't just a bringer of fate? What if she was a guardian against something far more sinister lurking on a New Year's Day? The first light of New Year's Day casts a soft glow over the deserted beaches of Brazil, painting the world in hues of gold and rose. Here, far from the celebratory clamor of the cities, I stand on the sands, camera in hand, waiting for a legend to awaken from the whispers of folklore. The tale of the White Lady, a spectral figure said to appear at dawn on this very day, has drawn me to these shores. Her story a mesmerizing blend of mystery and anticipation. The ocean before me is a canvas of tranquility, its waves whispering secrets as they kiss the shore. The beauty of the scene belies the eerie legend that surrounds it, a legend that has captivated my imagination and that of my audience. On New Year's Day, I narrate, my voice barely above the sound of the waves, the White Lady is said to emerge from the sea, a ghostly vision of fortune or doom. The camera pans across the beach, capturing the ethereal beauty of the morning. The sand, untouched by human footprints, stretches out like a blank page awaiting a story to be written. The air is crisp, filled with the scent of salt and mystery. In this serene setting, the legend of the White Lady feels tangible, as if at any moment she might materialize from the thin morning mist. According to local lore, the White Lady is a guardian spirit, a spectral entity that brings luck and prosperity to those she favors. Yet her appearance is a double-edged sword, for it is also said to foretell a year of trials and tribulations. The duality of her nature is a captivating enigma, one that has drawn me to this solitary beach in search of answers. As I walk along the shoreline, the first rays of sunlight painting the sky in brilliant colors, I feel a palpable sense of anticipation. The legend of the White Lady is more than a story to me. It's a mystery that beckons with the promise of revelation. I speak to the camera, my words weaving the tale of the White Lady into the fabric of the dawn. Some say she is the spirit of a woman wronged, seeking redemption. Others believe she's a celestial being, a messenger from realms beyond our understanding. The camera captures the moment, 
the anticipation of a legend coming to life. And then, as the sun rises higher, casting its golden light across the sea, a figure appears in the distance. A silhouette shrouded in white emerging from the mist that clings to the ocean. My heart races, the thrill of the legend manifesting before my eyes, electrifying the air. The White Lady, a figure of myth and mystery, is no longer just a tale. She is a reality, stepping out from the pages of folklore into the world of the living. As she approaches the camera steady in my trembling hands, I know that the story I am about to uncover is one that will haunt me and my viewers for years to come. As the figure in white draws closer, the mist swirling around her like a bridal train, the air seems to throb with an unspoken energy. I continue to film, my narration a whisper against the sound of the waves. Legend has it that the White Lady was once a woman of flesh and blood, her heart brimming with dreams and desires. Yet fate, as it often does, spun a tragic tale, weaving her destiny into the fabric of the supernatural. The White Lady's form becomes clearer, her visage ethereal, almost translucent under the burgeoning light of the dawn. Her eyes, a deep abyss of sorrow and wisdom, meet mine. In that gaze, I sense an ancient pain, a burden carried across centuries. The camera, an extension of my senses, captures this haunting beauty, her presence a stark contrast to the natural splendor of the beach. I find myself drawn to her, each step towards her an echo of a forgotten past. Some stories tell of a love lost, a betrayal that led to her untimely death, I narrate, my voice barely a tremor in the air. Others speak of her as an angelic figure, a guardian who watches over these shores, blessing those she deems worthy and warning those she does not. The beach, once a serene sanctuary, now feels like a liminal space, a threshold between the known and the unknown. The white lady stops a few feet away, her gaze never leaving mine. A sense of connection, inexplicable and profound, envelops me. The tales of her being a harbinger of both fortune and doom resonate within me, a dualism that mirrors the complexities of human nature. The camera captures this moment, a tangible record of an encounter that defies reality. Why have you appeared to me? I ask, my voice a mix of awe and fear. The white lady's lips part, but no sound emerges. Instead, a series of visions flood my mind, a silent communication that transcends language. I see images of her life, snapshots of joy and love, followed by scenes of betrayal and heartbreak. Her death, a tragic event shrouded in mystery and pain, transforms her into the spectral entity before me. The vision shift showing her interactions with others over the years. Some greeted with joy, others with fear. The narrative of the White Lady unfolds before me, a tapestry of human emotions and supernatural intervention. She is both a victim and a victor, bound to these shores by a power beyond her control. Her existence, a constant reminder of the thin veil that separates the living from the dead, the mundane from the mystical. As the vision cease, a profound silence falls over us. The White Lady's eyes, once filled with the sorrow of ages, now glimmer with a flicker of hope. In her gaze, I understand the unspoken message. Her appearance is not a mere chance, but a choice. A choice to reveal her story, to impart a truth that transcends time. The camera, still recording, captures the shift in the atmosphere. The sun, now fully risen, bathes us in its golden light, casting long shadows on the sand. The white lady's form begins to fade, her presence becoming as ethereal as the morning mist. As she disappears, a final image etches itself into my mind. A vision of myself, standing on these very shores, but altered, changed. It's a future where my path intertwines with the supernatural, where the stories I tell become gateways to understanding the mysteries of existence. The beach is silent once more, the magic of the encounter lingering in the air. I stand there, the camera now lowered, a sense of awe and wonder enveloping me. The White Lady's story, her message, has become a part of me, a narrative that I will carry forward.
As I gather my thoughts preparing to leave, I realize that the encounter has changed me. The legend of the White Lady is no longer just a tale to be narrated. It's a personal journey, a reminder of the unseen forces that weave through our lives. Her appearance, both a blessing and a warning, has opened my eyes to the deeper truths that lie hidden in the shadows of our understanding. The sun climbs higher, its rays warming the sand and the sea. The day ahead beckons, but the night's encounter has left an indelible mark on my soul. The White Lady, a spectral guardian of these shores, has shown me that the line between legend and reality is often blurred. That stories are not just tales, but windows into the unknown. As I pack my camera, the footage I've captured is a precious record of an otherworldly encounter. I know that this experience will shape my future narratives. The story of the White Lady, with its blend of sorrow and beauty, will be a tale that haunts my viewers just as it has haunted me. Stepping away from the beach, the sounds of the waking world filling the air, I carry with me a newfound respect for the mysteries that surround us, a deepened understanding of the intertwining of the human and the supernatural. The White Lady, a figure of myth and sorrow, has become a beacon, guiding me towards a future where the veil between worlds is a curtain to be drawn back, revealing the wonders and terrors that lie beyond. This beach now empty of the White Lady's presence seems to hold its breath in the aftermath of the encounter. I stand motionless, the camera off, my mind reeling from the visions and the profound sense of connection. The morning sun climbing higher in the sky casts a new light on the sands and the sea transforming the once eerie beach into a place of serene beauty. As I prepare to leave, a sudden uneasy feeling grips me. A sense of something unresolved, a piece of the puzzle still missing. The legend of the White Lady had always hinted at a duality, a bringer of fortune and doom, but the encounter had revealed much more. Her story was one of lost betrayal and an unending search for redemption. I decide to explore the beach once more, the camera now recording, seeking any signs or clues that the White Lady might have left behind. The soft sound of the waves accompanies me, a soothing backdrop to the tumultuous thoughts swirling in my mind. As I walk, I recount the experience to my viewers, the words flowing more as a stream of consciousness. The White Lady, a spirit caught between worlds, has shown me the depth of her tale a narrative woven into the very fabric of these shores. Yet there's a sense that her story is not just a relic of the past, but a living, breathing entity that continues to evolve. The camera pans across the beach, capturing the play of light on the water and the sand. And then, a sudden movement catches my eye. Footprints in the sand, leading towards the sea. Footprints that weren't there before. My heart races as I follow them, the camera documenting each step. The footprints lead to the water's edge and then, inexplicably, veer off to a small secluded area of the beach, a place shadowed by overhanging cliffs. As I approach, a chill runs down my spine. Nestled in the shadow of the cliffs is a small shrine, adorned with offerings, flowers, candles, and small trinkets. It's a tribute to the White Lady, a testament to her enduring presence. But it's what I see next that brings a gasp to my lips. Among the offerings is a photo, aged and worn by time. I pick it up, my hands trembling. The photo depicts a woman, her features strikingly similar to the white lady, but there's more. Standing beside her is a man, his face hauntingly familiar. It's me, or rather, an image that resembles me in an uncanny way. The realization hits me like a wave. The White Lady's story is not just a tale of the past. It's intertwined with my own. The visions, the sense of connection, it all leads to this moment, this revelation. The photo, a bridge between time and space, suggests a bond that transcends the boundaries of reality. I stand there, the photo in hand, the truth dawning on me. The White Lady, a spirit of sorrow and longing, had not just appeared to reveal her story, she had come to unveil a connection, a shared destiny that I was now a part of. 
My narratives, my exploration of the supernatural had led me to this point, to a revelation that I was inextricably linked to her legend. The camera still recording captures my expression of shock and awe. The viewers I know will feel the weight of this discovery, the intertwining of the storyteller with the story. The White Lady, a spectral guardian of these shores, had chosen me to carry her tale forward, to be a voice for her unspoken truths. As the sun reaches its zenith, casting a warm glow over the beach, I feel a sense of closure, a peace that comes with understanding. The White Lady's appearance, her revelations, had been a journey not just into the past, but into the depths of my own soul. I leave the beach with the photo, a tangible link to a narrative that will forever be a part of me. The White Lady, once a legend shrouded in mystery, had become a guiding light. A symbol of the interconnectedness of all stories, all destinies. The footage I've captured is more than just a record of a supernatural encounter. It's a testament to the power of narrative. To the ability of stories to reveal the hidden threads that connect us across time and space. And as I share this tale with the world, I do so with a newfound respect for the mysteries that surround us for the tales that weave through our lives, binding us in ways we may never fully understand. As we tread cautiously into the new year, we must ponder, are these mere tales or windows into unfathomable truths? The most unsettling revelation comes now. As I recount these stories, a chilling sense has enveloped me. I'm not alone. There's a presence here, watching, waiting. Perhaps just like these tales, the line between our reality and the otherworldly is frighteningly thin. Thank you for venturing with us into these nightmarish realms. If this journey sent shivers down your spine, show your support with a like, share, and subscribe to Haunting Crypt Chronicles. Stay brave, stay curious, and may you find light in the darkest of times. Did that story send shivers down your spine? The haunting tales from the crypt are just the beginning, and we have more bone-chilling stories waiting for you. If you've dared to wander into our crypt, ensure you don't miss out on the upcoming nightmares. Hit that subscribe button now and join our community of thrill-seekers. Click that subscribe button and become a part of the Haunting Crypt Chronicles family. The shadows await your presence. Subscribe now, and let the haunting continue.